When I got into the room where she died, which was the room I stayed in, I looked at the calendar and saw the markdown to the date of the birth of the baby. It would be the markdown to the date that she would see her Savior. And I remember going through her things. And when I went through her things, as I was looking through her things, I, I noticed something, and it spoke a sermon to me that was stronger than any sermon I, I could ever have heard in a church. I saw that there was a folder there. And in that folder, when I opened it up, was the photo, of, uh, an 8 by 10 photo of a man. It was his face. It was a close-up. It was a portrait of a man. The thing that was hard about it was that it was very difficult to look at because his face had melted away. He no longer had the ability to have that three-dimensional look. It was simply a flat face with, with uh, uh, holes for eyes two holes for a nose, a hole for a mouth, but no three-dimensional quality to the face. When I saw it, I, I, I almost put it down to where I wouldn't look at it. But then I looked at the next thing in that folder that was in my mom's things, and I saw this same man, now with a three-dimensional face to where he was smiling and had his face back. I flipped that photo and I saw something that was typed out and all of the details of this man's story and he had been affected by the bombing of Hiroshima. And he therefore lost his face with all that happened and somehow my mom found out about his story and my mom who was unknown to anybody, not famous, five foot one, simply had a heart for this man when she heard his story. And she raised the money that she knew how to raise because there was a day when she was public relations for Billy Graham. She knew how to raise money. And she raised the thousands upon thousands of dollars that would be needed to get him surgery that I believe was at the Mayo Clinic. And I closed the folder and I put it aside and I noticed that there was an envelope full of pictures and I looked at the pictures and here were the teens that I remembered coming into our home from uh, Vietnam from South Vietnam. For years, we would have teams come. They would be uh, blue in face and blue in lips because sometimes they'd be in on oxygen. And, and the, the guys would open up their shirts and show me their chest that would have little football tread. It would look like a little football because they just had open heart surgery. And my mom would get that open heart surgery for them for free at the Mayo Clinic. My mom placed over 100 orphans from, from South Vietnam into marine family homes in the United States that needed homes. And I was looking at these pictures. There they were at Disneyland, due to all those free tickets. I saw some that didn't make it, that died even while they were with us at the house because we got only the worst cases. And I set these back in and I tucked it aside. And I thought in my mom's own way, somehow God's allowing her to speak a lesson to me. You know, my mom who was unknown, was able to fully enter her generation and make a difference. Because to her, the greatest events of her generation would have been World War II. The bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki must have grabbed her heart. Vietnam and the Vietnam War. We had friends that had died in the Vietnam War, and it must have grabbed her heart. I want to say this to you. I believe that that lesson is the lesson I'd love for us to walk away with from our sixth anniversary service that you have the ability to enter your generation fully. And that even if it's just that God has placed one person who works with you on your heart, one family member on your heart today, somebody that instantly comes to your mind that you've been praying for, whatever it may be, maybe God has placed a nation on your heart. Maybe God has placed a leader of our nation. I believe that if you will listen to the stirrings of the Holy Spirit, that God will use your life to make an eternal difference. Stand to your feet. I want to pray over you. Let's bow our heads. In reverence before God. Heavenly Father, we give you glory. We give you praise for six years of abundant ministry. We've never had to beg for money. We've never had to be concerned, God, about opportunities. You have given opportunities left and right. You've put around us a wonderful leadership team, an outstanding board of directors, an outstanding staff 
an incredible group of volunteer leaders who are, who are really the backbone of this church, including ones who have been taking care of our kids through this service. Father, we give you glory that when we didn't know how, all we knew was the what, but we didn't know the how. God, you poured out liberally of your presence and of your spirit and allowed for us to gather together today and in being with family in Capital Life Church. God, I pray that you will stir great dreams in individuals here. Show people you've been on the scene even before they were born. Show people that what you do cannot be explained through human understanding. Show people how awesomely you will move in the days ahead in the Washington, D.C. metro area. Show us the testimonies. Show us the people that are lost but will be found. God, we give you glory for every life of, of an individual who has stood in these services and said, I give my heart to Jesus. I give my life to you, God. I want to be used by you. We give you glory for every physical healing. For every healing of emotions and healing of families, we do not limit you. You are an awesome God. God, we pray that you will stir us. And make it practical. Bring it to our doorstep. What does this mean? How can I step out and apply this message today? That God, you want us to fully enter. No half-heartedness. No stepping back. No shallow roots. To fully enter. If you're here today and you've never given your heart to Jesus, well, every head is bowed and every eye closed. And those of you listening to me by YouTube right now or by podcast, now is your moment to give your heart to Jesus. We've seen it week by week. We've watched this individual say, I must have assurance of salvation. I don't want to go another day with a question mark over my head as to where I'll be in all eternity. I want to know that I'm a part of the family of God. If that's you here today and you want to make that decision, if you're listening today and you want to make that decision, now is your moment. We're going to pray this prayer. We'll all pray it together. But if you believe that this moment is your moment, then you are going to seal the deal. And say it's my decision to embrace Jesus as my Savior and to give my future and my life fully to Him. If that's you, will you pray this with all your heart? Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, I repent of my sins. You died on the cross for me. You are God. You are holy. I give my life to you. I believe with my heart. I confess with my mouth that you, Jesus, are Savior and Lord. I am now a part of the family of God. As every head is bowed and every eye closed. If you prayed that prayer because you needed assurance, you meant it with all your heart, all I'm going to ask you to do is lift your hand into the air and then put it back down. You've seen it week by week. Yes, yes, who else? Just lift your hand up and put it back down. You say, that was me, Pastor. I prayed that prayer and I meant it. Anyone else here today? Heavenly Father, we give you the glory for what is happening in Capital Life Church. Now let us be a church on wheels and feet. Let us go out and do your bidding through this week, we pray, and we give you glory in Jesus' name.